this walkthrough, let's go over some of the techniques that I usually use to blend flip surface onto the ocean. So here's a simple uh, scene setup. This is the domain, this is uh, an obstacle, and this is the fluid. So let me explain a few things first. Let's just bake this simulation as it is uh, with the default settings, and then let's take a look. So this is the default uh, simulation where fluid volume is created. So in order for our blending to work properly between this flip surface to the ocean, we would need a plane rather than this volume. So the way we can get that is by going to the surface tab of the domain. And here we have an option meshing against boundary. So here we can click on remove mesh near boundary and then we can increase this voxel distance. Um, default one should work, but we can increase this if the simulation is a little bit more turbulent. So at a default distance of one, let's bake the simulation and then see how it goes. So that's the fluid surface that we were looking for. So instead of volume, now we have a fluid surface. So this is much easier to blend with the ocean. So the next step is we need an ocean plane. So for that, if you go over my tutorial, here's, an, here's a tutorial on how to create an ocean plane. Uh, this is based on the technique by Dylan Neal. So here's the ocean plane. So let's copy this ocean plane, either by right-clicking and copy objects, or control C and let's go back to the flip surface and while the scene collection is clicked let's paste by pressing control V and there we go we have the ocean so one thing we need to take care is that the Z level of the ocean and the flip surface should be matched so for that let's select the ocean and let's change this to vertex and let's uh, enable the snap tool. And then while the cursor is placed on the flip surface, let's press G, Z. So by doing that, the Z level of the ocean and the flip surface is matched. So we can see a little bit of Z fighting. This is what we need. Looks good so far. So the next step is to make sure that the materials are matched between the ocean to the flip surface. So the ocean has this ocean material and the flip surface. Let's add the ocean material and let's head to the cycles preview. And let's just ensure that the ocean swell bake and ocean detail bakes, the folders are directed properly. So Let's go to where we have the EXR files for the baked ocean, for the swell and the detail. And select all. Perfect. Now there we go. So now we have the ocean and the flip surface. So far, so good. It looks well blended, but we still need a few more steps. So at this point, let's take a look at our ship wake simulation. There we go. So here, although the Z level for the ocean and the flip surface is matched, we can still see that there is a gap between the ocean to the flip surface and it's not blended well. So let's tackle this issue. Let's go back to this example. And the reason why that happens is if you look at the edges of the flip surface, the edges are curved. So let's take a look at this flip surface. So as we can see, the edges are curved. So that's the reason why we see a gap between the ocean to the flip surface. So in order to blend properly, let's flatten the edge of this fluid surface. The way we can do that is by adding 
a lattice modifier. First, let's ensure that the 3D cursor is on the fluid surface and at the center. So for that, let's select the fluid surface. Let's tab into edit mode. And let's select this vertex and press Shift S, cursor to select it. So that way we have the 3D cursor right on the fluid surface at the center. Let's add a lattice modifier and let's scale it up so that it's slightly larger than the fluid surface. And this is our fluid surface, so it's slightly larger. Now, while the lattice is selected, let's change the resolution from 2 to 12. There we go. Looks good. Now let's get into the edit mode. And in the top view, we would like the edges of this lattice to scale down so that they flatten. So let's select the vertices at the edge. And while those are selected, press S, Z, zero. So that way, the vertices at the edge have a Z level of zero. Cool. Now let's select the fluid surface and under modifiers, let's add a lattice modifier and let's select the lattice as the object. Cool. Now we can see that the edges of the fluid surface is flattened because the lattice is affecting the fluid surface. Cool. Let's hide the lattice. Now when we go to the ship wake simulation to the fluid surface, I already added the lattice modifier. There we go. So this is the lattice. This is the top view of the lattice with the edges flattened. And selecting the fluid surface, when we activate the lattice modifier, let's just give it a minute. There we go. So it blends really, really well. There's no more gap anymore right here. So that's the advantage of using the lattice modifier. So that way the blend seems much more streamlined. So let's hide the lattice modifier. There you go. So it's very difficult to distinguish the flip surface from the ocean. So far, so good. Let's say we would like to take it a step further. So what we can do is we can select the ocean plane and then we can add a shrink wrap modifier to the ocean plane. Let's get to the viewport view. Now what happens when we add the shrink wrap modifier on the ocean is let's hide the flip fluid surface. Actually, let's um, remove the flip meshes from the view layer visibility. So this is the ocean and the ship. So what happens when we use a shrink wrap modifier is the ocean actively wraps around the fluid surface. So sometimes this is beneficial. If the scene is a simple scene, then basic composition of white water on top of fluid surface on top of ocean should be sufficient. But sometimes we also need to use the shrink wrap modifier on the ocean. There we go. So now this is the ocean itself. So in this scenario, we only need to render the ocean and the white water. We don't need the fluid surface. Let's see that in a bit.
So here, let's toggle the visibility of the fluid surface. Let's hide it. So there's no more fluid surface here, but we can see the ocean wrapping around the fluid surface and creating these nice waves, just like the fluid surface. And this is the white water. So sometimes this actually helps. So that's the reason why I also use a shrink wrap modifier on the ocean. So the wrap method is project snap mode on surface and the limit, I typically go with the maximum wave height and this can be adjusted. And subdivision levels, I try to keep it matched to the initial subdivision. And the axis, only the z-axis, and both in the negative and the positive direction. And the face call is off, and the target is the fluid surface. So this is my ocean stack. Cool. Now let's get to the cycles preview and take a look. There you go. So here, there's no fluid surface. There's just the ocean and the white water. Here we go. So if we do not use shrink wrap modifier, then we don't see any waves in the ocean um, due to the flip surface. So this doesn't look good. So what we need to do is we need to bring back the fluid surface. There you go. So these are various methods that I use to seamlessly blend the flip surface to the ocean. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick walkthrough. Thank you and stay tuned for more simulations.